Go. Hey everybody, I'm out here at the Duval herb farm, which happens to have a fantastic plantain patch. Not planted, just volunteer. And I wanted to teach you guys a little bit about plantain. I have both kinds here. Let's zoom in so we can see. Um, so plantain is, has nothing to do with the banana, FYI. It's a plant and it is a weed in Washington. And there's two different kinds. So on this side, we see our narrow leaf plantain, which is well named because it's got a narrow leaf. And on this side, we have our broadleaf plantain. And plantain is super fibrous and the <clears throat> veins for the leaves go all the way down into the stem. So we see these really prominent white veins on this one. And this species also has that, the veins go all the way down into the stem. And if we break it, we do indeed see those super strong fibers that are in the veins. Um, so that's kind of the identification part of it. Um, we can also look over here. This is what plantain flowers look like. And <clears throat> so these flowers um, don't quite, they haven't bloomed yet. This is actually a bud and it has a bunch of little flowers in here. And so when it blooms, it'll point out these little anthers um, and then the seeds will form. So if you've ever seen psyllium husk, psyllium husk is actually just plantain seed. So you can harvest the seeds of both of these species of plantain and use them in place of psyllium husk, which is kind of a bulking fiber for constipation, but also helps feed large intestine bacteria. So that's one use of plantain. Um, but plantain leaf is the most commonly, commonly used part. And um, there's a bunch of different uses for it. Sometimes you just chew it and spit it out onto a bug bite or a bee sting or a nettle sting or a rash. And it's really soothing. It kind of helps reduce the itch. It's also a wound healer though. So you can put it on wounds to help them heal more quickly. Um, and you can also use it in a tea internally. So for that, you'd want to dry the leaves and you know, get all the leaves lined up and dry them really carefully at home. You don't want to harvest on a wet day, which it just started to rain. So today would not be a great day for plantain harvest. Um, partially because it makes it more difficult to dry. You'll actually, it'll start to get little um, kind of black goo on it if you dry it, or if you specifically plantain, if you pick it and dry it when it's wet. So you want to get it as dry as possible, even set up a fan or do it in your dehydrator. And you can make a tea from those dried leaves that's really good for healing kind of ulcers or dried reticulitis and just also soothing the intestinal tract. Um, Man, we could go on too. Plantain also is good for like lung soothing. People use it also kind of like as a mild expectorant, but it's kind of all the soothing themes for plantain. It's anti-inflammatory. It's a little bit mucilaginous, which means it's got that moistening quality to it. Um, any last bits about plantain that we should go over? Um, I mean, to harvest it, really all you need to do is just pick leaf by leaf. So this leaf, um, if there's a lot of them, you could even dig up a whole plant. In this particular case, let's actually kind of look around a little bit so we can see all the plantain that's here. And you can kind of identify it by the flowers that stick up. And there's a bunch more over there, a bunch more over there. So plantain is a weed, which means that the harvest of it is very sustainable because it's enthusiastic. And you can actually introduce it into your garden by harvesting the seeds in the wild and kind of just broadcasting them in your yard. And it will grow and it will be there forever. So know that, know that you want to invite it. Be aware that it will be there forever when you do. So that's all I have to say about plantain today, guys. Thanks.